Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Joel, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. The day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in age to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, when your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether we will not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him? a grain offering and drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride or canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14, found on page 733. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He, he will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the twentieth verse. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he was made, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we may, might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found in our ministry. But as servants of God we have committed ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labor, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and 
and see we are alive, and as punishment, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. Whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. makes this warning. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. He then goes on to give examples of what practicing your piety before others looks like, using the illustration of a man sounding a trumpet before giving alms. I did a little, receipt, little research to see if trumpet sounding was a common practice before alms giving, and uh, came up empty-handed. But the commentator did say that this was a warning about looking one way on the outside and being different on the inside. And I don't disagree with this, but worry such an interpretation can make it seem like this is a story about hypocrisy. But it does not seem to be about hypocrisy because the guy blowing the trumpet does actually give the money. The warning seems more about us wanting to make sure that everyone knows about our good and virtuous behavior. To use a sports term, the warning seems less about hypocrisy and more about showboating. It is a deliberate drawing attention to ourselves in an attempt to be praised by others. And in, a, and in our day and age, if we actually follow this advice, it might lead to the collapse of social media. But besides that, we might also want to take a moment and ask, why does Jesus tell us this? And furthermore, why do we read it on a day when we get ashes smudged on our heads? Well, here's my take on it. Ash Wednesday is the kickoff to Lent, which is a season of fasting and introspection. In this time, we are supposed to take a look at ourselves, by which we mean all of ourselves, not just the stuff that we can put on a spreadsheet. What I mean by this is our Christian faith cannot be declared exclusively by outward actions. We can't say I gave 10% of my income last year, attended church 87% of the time, well, not that that really happened, and volunteered seven times in a homeless shelter. Now these are all good things and things we should do, 
But Lent also asks us to look inside ourselves and ask, why are we doing these things? The man Jesus describes today gives money, but it appears that he gives this money in order to be congratulated by his fellow citizens. He wants people to nod approvingly when he walks by. But Jesus says such an understanding is missing the point. The reason for doing good things is not to gain the approval of society. And the reason that it's not is because such approval is fleeting and may not even be moral. Many an act of injustice has been done to the approving cheers of the crowd, including the crucifixion of Jesus. The goal then is to do what God wants, but also to do it because we have grown so much in holiness that we want nothing more than to do what God wants. In the same way, I don't really need to convince my dog that she would like a Lambo. Our will is to be indistinguishable from God's will. One of the big themes of the Reformation was the debate about faith and works. Put in the cartoon version, the Roman Catholics said works mattered and the Lutherans said faith mattered. But the thing is, they should be indistinguishable. A fully formed faith will do works, and works will be done by a fully formed faith. Just as someone can go to church and not be Christian, someone can do good works and not be Christian. They must both be present. Going into Lent, Christ is asking for us to examine everything, not just our actions, but our motivations as well, so that we may be Christ's own this day and forevermore. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and it became the custom of the Church to prepare for them by its season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time for those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the Church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy land, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer.
Psalm 51. Have mercy on me. According to your loving kindness, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me, and hold me may understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. That the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving health again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your grace. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and one another, to the whole community of saints, in heaven and on earth, that we have sinned by our own fault and thought and word and deed, and what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have no mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have no mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, the hypocrisy. We confess to you, Lord. Our self indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger and our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our temper of love, worldly goods, and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence of prayer and worship and our failure to commit the faith that is. We confess to you, Lord. We accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrong we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to justice, injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, for our prejudice and contempt for those who have been from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our weight and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. May they really hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. And that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent the absolution or remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit. 
these things may please him, which we do on this day, that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.